In our last lesson, we looked at sources and function of key nutrients found in food, the structure and function of the human alimentary canal, as well as the role of digestive enzymes. In this lesson, we'll be looking at the metabolic reaction respiration. Please remember to like, subscribe and post any questions in the comments box below. These are the specification points we'll be covering. In today's lesson, we want to be able to describe the differences between aerobic and anaerobic respiration. As a starter, what are the components of a healthy diet? Describe how food moves from the mouth to the stomach. Explain why food leaving the stomach needs to be neutralized. You can pause the video while you think. For question one, a balanced diet should include appropriate proportions of carbohydrates, proteins, lipids, vitamins, minerals, water and dietary fiber. For question two, movement along the alimentary canal happens via muscular contractions known as peristalsis. Food leaving the stomach is acidic. However, the enzymes in the small intestine work better in alkali conditions. Therefore, bile neutralizes stomach acid as it contains sodium hydrogen carbonate, which is an alkali. <laughs> Both plants and animals undergo an important enzyme control reaction called respiration. This does not mean breathing, but it is a chemical reaction that releases energy that an organism can use. We describe the reaction as an exothermic reaction because it releases energy to its surroundings. You may remember when we talked about photosynthesis being an endothermic reaction which involves energy being absorbed. Why do organisms need energy? Energy is needed for things such as movement, keeping warm and chemical reactions. There are two types of respiration we'll be looking at. These are aerobic and anaerobic respiration. Aerobic respiration occurs in organelles called the mitochondria. The word equation being glucose plus oxygen produces carbon dioxide, water and ATP. The symbol equation being C6H12O6 plus 6O2 goes to 6CO2 plus 6H2O plus ATP. When the bonds are broken in glucose, the energy release is transferred to assemble a molecule called ATP. ATP stands for adenosine triphosphate. This is the universal energy carrier and a short-term energy store in biological systems. Looking back at the reaction for aerobic respiration, where do glucose and oxygen come from? What two tests could you do to test for the presence of carbon dioxide and water? You can pause the video while you think. Glucose comes from the food an organism eats, unless it's a plant which produces it through photosynthesis. Oxygen is breathed in via our lungs or diffused into the plant leaf via the stomata in plants. During key stage three, you may remember doing the lime water test. If carbon dioxide is present, the lime water turns cloudy. To test for the presence of water, you can simply breathe on a window, which causes water vapor from your mouth to cool down into its liquid form. This is known as condensation. Alternatively, you can use cobalt chloride paper. Aerobic respiration provides us with the most ATP and is the most efficient way of transferring energy from glucose. <laughs> Our second type of respiration is anaerobic. This type of reaction happens without oxygen. It happens in the cytoplasm, produces less ATP, and therefore is an inefficient way of transferring energy from glucose. Why does anaerobic respiration occur when it's so inefficient? In humans, if you were to start exercising vigorously, you would reach a point where you're not taking in enough oxygen as fast as you need it in order to break down glucose. At this point, the cells in your body can respire without oxygen to meet your ATP needs. This can be seen in our muscles. In animals, glucose can be broken down to produce lactic acid and ATP. Lactic acid is poisonous and needs to be broken down by oxygen. The amount of oxygen required to remove lactic acid and replace the body's reserve of oxygen is called the oxygen debt. Lactic acid is taken to the liver by the blood and either oxidized to carbon dioxide and water or converted to glucose and then glycogen. Glycogen levels in the liver and the muscles can then be restored. In plants, fungi and bacteria, they can also respire anaerobically. Glucose breaks down to produce ethanol and carbon dioxide plus ATP. This type of respiration is actually useful for humans and we use it to make bread, alcoholic drinks in a process known as fermentation, which involves using yeast. In plants, they will switch from aerobic respiration to anaerobic respiration in waterlogged soil when their root cells are not able to get enough oxygen. Let's do a progress check to see how much you have remembered. Complete the Venn diagram to compare aerobic respiration with anaerobic respiration. You can pause the video while you think. Aerobic respiration produces more ATP. It involves oxygen. It occurs in the cytoplasm, but mainly in the mitochondria. 
and it produces water. Similarities include they both produce ATP. Both aerobic respiration and anaerobic respiration in plants produce carbon dioxide. For anaerobic respiration, it produces less ATP. It occurs in the cytoplasm. It does not involve oxygen and it produces lactic acid or ethanol. Let's take a look at some exam questions. Name the substance with the formula C6H12O6. You can pause the video while you think. The correct answer is glucose. Name the structure in the cytoplasm of our cells where aerobic respiration takes place. You can pause the video while you think. The correct answer is mitochondria. Respiration is a process which takes place in living cells. What is the purpose of respiration? You can again pause the video while you think. The purpose of respiration is the production of ATP or the release of energy. By the end of the lesson, you should be able to describe the differences between aerobic and anaerobic respiration. In our next lesson, we will look at gas exchange and flowering plants, which will include talking about the structure of the leaf and the role of the stomata. Please remember to like, subscribe and post any questions in the comments box below.